Lady de Sade, what bountiful wind brings... Enough pleasantries, Excellency. They are a dull canter after such treachery. I beg your pardon? What are you talking about? Have you forgotten that after sending me to save your servants, that you then again sought my assistance? According to you, I needed only to convince the Tiana Hakadactus to provide us with a remedy. But you used me like a pawn, seeking in truth to capture her. I... I cannot understand why you are reacting in this way. I was certain that the Witch Doctor would refuse to help us. They have us marked down as enemies, after all. And I had good reason to believe that you would not resort to physical persuasion. You were even ready to use brute force against your own allies. Whatever do you mean? After wounding the Tiana, your spy attempted to kill me, Excellency. And you dare to tell me that my anger is exaggerated. Can I remind you that to assassinate a legate is to declare war against her sovereign? I never... I promise you that I had no intention for any harm to befall you. That man went beyond his orders, I assure you. I implore you. Please accept my sincerest and profound apologies in the name of the Bridge Alliance. I can only give you the benefit of the doubt for now, Your Excellency. I'm surprised that your spy has not returned to report the mission's failure. Has he fled, rather than assuming responsibility for his crime? I have not seen him, this is true. Which does not surprise me, given all that you have just told me. But know that he will be caught and judged for his crime. Once again, I apologize sincerely for this crime. It should never have happened. In any case, we need to get our hands on this woman. The remedy is perhaps... There never was a remedy. It was a wild goose chase. Perhaps even some sort of machination. No. That... That is terrible. This is a great setback. How could I have been so naive? What a shame. I am truly sorry that you risked your life in vain. Would you like to speak with me about any other subjects? I have taken care of your problem with the caravans. The merchants should now be able to reach Hikmet. Captain Rainhild has sent a message to that effect. You have done a great service for me. Though there is something that bothers me. I was told that you met these savages and then let them go. They showed no mercy at all with your own merchants. The congregation is not in conflict with these natives, and has no wish to begin one. Ah, your famous neutrality. Well then, you have solved the problem, and I would be discourteous to deny it. My pleasure. I imagine the captain must have informed you of all that we learned. Indeed, and I am extremely worried. An attack of any significant magnitude would be a catastrophe for our city. We have the means to repel these savages, but it will not be without great losses. Perhaps there is another way. The natives have clearly expressed their wishes. The freedom of their brothers and sisters. I see where this is headed, but I fear that they were not honest with you. A few natives are being held in the prison of the coin guard, but a handful of warriors does not seem to justify an assault of such commitment. They were not speaking of just a few soldiers. But of kidnappings, the victims are only villagers. This is inexplicable. We have taken no villagers. Of course, we answer their attacks in kind. And at times, we have taken prisoners on the battlefield. But what use would we have for a few fishermen, hunters, and weavers? Might it be possible that these kidnappings have taken place without your consent? I doubt that. But of course, it is always possible that a few bandits might have stolen a shipment of arms. If that were the case, that would explain a great deal. Since you have been of such service to my people, and this grievous affair seems of great concern to you, would you be of a mind to lead the inquiry? Capture a few of these savages. Make it your mission to make them talk. We must understand what is going on before they attack. Very well. I shall get to the bottom of this affair, Your Excellency. Would you like to speak with me about any other subjects? I met Ulan, the Bone Blower's clan chief from the village of Vignamri. He is an open-minded man who holds great expectations of exchanges with the colonies. He would like to meet you to discuss a treaty, even an alliance. Ulan, you say? I have never heard mention of this name. 
But to finally have an ally among the natives could only be beneficial. That is excellent news. Still, I fear that I cannot leave the city. That would be taking too much of a risk. I doubt that Ulan will come to Hikmet. He is looking for an alliance, but he is not desperate. Such a gesture would be considered a sign of weakness by his clan. That is understandable, I suppose. Do they grasp the concept of emissaries? Do you think that solution might work? I think that might be possible. I'm sure he would understand that you could not come to see him in person for the same reason. Excellent. Finally, some clear skies in our negotiations with the natives. My right-hand man will then go to this village to finalize an agreement with King Ulan. I'll be there too, to make sure everything goes according to our plans. There is another matter concerning the same village that I would like to bring to your attention. A wandering merchant, member of the Ulan clan, is being kept in your outpost. Can you authorize his entry into the city? I see no harm in that. This merchant is certainly not a threat to us, and he might even prove useful if the negotiations with his clan should take a foul turn. Here, please be so kind as to give him this letter of passage. If he presents it to the guards, they will let him in and he'll be able to establish his stall in town. I thank you. I hope to see you again. I have to go. Look forward to seeing you again. Farewell, my lady. Respectfully, Your Excellency. What can I do for you? Governor Burren asked me to investigate the abductions the rebels told us about. If we could find the origin and free their comrades, I'm sure they would stop their attack. I need to locate and speak with the other rebels. Do you know where they could be? No. They don't attack often. I fear they're gathering their forces. Captain, the patrol we sent to the west has not returned yet. I may have spoken too quickly, Your Excellency. Although it might still be possible that our men are just delayed. Perhaps you would allow me to search for them. Maybe they crossed paths with the rebels. Corporal, do you know which way the patrol went? Of course, Captain. You will lead, His Excellency. In hope that our men are still alive. At your command, Captain. Your Excellency, find me at the entrance of the camp when you're ready to start. Just keep walking, Renaixe. This does not concern you. Have mercy. They will kill me. I am but a merchant who wishes to trade with the big city.
If I were you, I would leave at once. A squad of guards are approaching. Not Fradi. Let's leave. We are not ready for an encounter yet. But we will get you for this, merchant. Adlo Reda on Almanawi. May the trees along your path always bear fruit. Think nothing of it. Ulan told me that you were not able to enter the town. It is true. The soldiers did not let me enter. They left me outside, and the Donea Exdragao took advantage of this opportunity to attack me. Rest assured, I have obtained permission for you to enter from the Governor of Hikmet, which should allow you to set up your stall in the city. Adloreda Renaixi. Thanks again. Farewell, merchant. Perhaps we will meet again. I see that the governor of Hikmet's emissary is already here. He is. And I am very thankful that you succeeded in organizing this meeting. I am full of hope for the future. We are very grateful as well, Your Excellency. However, if you could leave us, I am sure you can understand that the discussion we are about to have must remain confidential. Naturally. I hope that you will reach an agreement. So, have you reached an agreement? Our discussions were very fruitful. However, we are faced with a problem. Really? Our peace treaty depends on the ability to exchange freely. And Chief Ulan has warned me that our merchants would be at risk of being attacked by the neighboring clan. Mordun, the chief of the village of Igugsob, is at the near Exragao. He is among those who think that the people of your island are only here to take from us. But his village would also benefit from this agreement. If you could convince him to meet us, we could reach an understanding, allowing the caravans to pass through his territory. Without this, I am afraid we would not be able to make a commitment. Peace and trade are linked. If our merchants risk their lives coming here, I am sure that you will manage to convince him that the Renaixe are not all bad. I can try, at least. Adoreda, we will wait here and hope that you will manage to reason with him.
What are you doing here, and I say? Your coin are not welcoming my village. Ulan, the king of Vignamri, wants to establish a trade agreement and sign a peace treaty with the governor of Hikmet. This sounds like something he would do. All he ever thinks about is picking up the crumbs left behind by the Renaigs, say. All of that in hope of breeding new life into his village, while insulting the memory of the deceased men and women who lived there. Hikmet's emissary will only sign if their merchants can move freely and in peace. They want to meet you. I am not like him. I am a Donea Exregal. A proud man, not a slug. The Renaixe cannot be trusted. They are deceitful and only seek to trap us. The Donea Exregau I have met were fearless. And yet you were running away from a mere meeting. By refusing to negotiate, you are only showing weakness. Nothing else. Oh, not Fradi. The worst part is that you are right. I cannot refuse this meeting without appearing weak. Fine. I will meet Ulan and his emissary. But I will not go to his village. Tell them to find me at Landristel. I will be there in a few hours. I will tell them right away. Thank you, Mordun. You really know how to talk to people. I never thought you would be able to convince Mordun. His anger towards the Renaigse is so strong.
Mordun is willing to meet you at Lanristel to sign a peace treaty. You really are an accomplished negotiator and diplomat, Your Excellency. I knew you would succeed. Thanks to you, the whole region will be at peace. Do you know where this place is, Ulan? Of course. In our language, Lanristel means Glade of Promises. It is a sacred place, one whose peacefulness must be respected. It bodes well. In that case, we should go there at once. Yes. I will follow you. Come back to see me soon. And if luck is on our side, we will celebrate peace together. Ulan is acting strangely. I do not trust him. I suddenly feel the urge to go to Lan Ristel. I hear it looks wonderful this time of year. And if we want to see this encounter, we should leave now. Edloredar, thank you for coming. You saved me. Dada cursed Ulan. I should have known he would betray us both. My men are dead, and now I am injured. He achieved exactly what he wanted in the end. I will have to join another clan if I do not want my whole village to suffer the consequences of my defeat. I'm sorry, Mordun. I really am. You were deceived, just like I was. Sometimes, among the stones, there can be snakes. Farewell, Onol Manawi. And do not let yourself be betrayed again.
traitor. This meeting was meant to establish peace, and yet you have exclusively sent armed men. Mordun was a Danaea ex regal. He would have never accepted an agreement with the Renaig say. He would have endlessly attacked our merchants and our allies' caravans. We had to protect ourselves if we were to make these exchanges possible. So we did. By lying and manipulating me. I am sorry, but I was unsure that you would agree to help us if I told you the truth. I understand your anger, but keep in mind that we are now at peace, thanks to you. You are now a Karans of Ignamri, and should you seek it, you will always have our assistance. Anything else? Nothing. I must go.